Mom Thomas isn't here. There's no way these toy soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long, and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, Fire, Nolik, why in the world would you shoot at a Fixie? Fixies? They're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go. The catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. <laughs> no, like. Now push. All right. Yes, right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly. <laughs> right out the window. Right up to the moon. First fixing onto the world, Nolik. Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir. Nolik, get out of the spoon now. I'll be the first fixie on the moon, yeah! Nolik, enough of this! What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all! He's gonna fly into space! And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter. Hold on! Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah, Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times, but people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, a catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Abus, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So? Let's do it! Fire! Launch it! Stop! Don't! Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! <laughs> <laughs> Whew! We're alive! Hooray! He flew all the way! Who flew away? To the moon? Nope, just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? No, 
Alec, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Uh. Ugh. through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb, the deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity in hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. They're all done. Nolik, bring them in. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this! I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain, chain reaction. reaction. <sighs> it's about me. Pixies. It's 
to Sokka. It sounds like she's angry with us. I wish I knew what that mad dog was thinking about. I'm thinking about you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You better hide or people will see you. I'm leaving. See you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's going to rain. <sighs> Choose Sokka. I have no time to play right now. I'm not playing. His feet are going to get soaked. Tom Thomas, I'm off. Don't be late. Chusaka, that's enough. No, I need to go to school. He's got his math class today and he's leaving his math book. I'm trying to serve like a good dog, but no one understands me. Dogs have been serving people since ancient times, along with cows, horses, chickens, and other domestic animals. But of all of these animals, the dog was the very first. In the beginning, domesticated dogs looked like wolves. Over time, they started changing and were developed into dogs of many different breeds, from big shepherds to tiny chihuahuas. So a dog is not only a human's best friend, but his very first friend as well. What is that smell? of service dogs. Dogs that help people by carrying out a wide variety of different jobs, like protecting a house or a flock of sheep if the dogs are shepherds. Some working dogs help guards protect their borders, while others work for the police. There are sled dogs that transport people and loads in the north, where there's only snow and no roads. Some service dogs help blind people by helping them get to the places they need to go. And there are dogs that save people trapped on mountains. And that's not all. Dogs went up into space before humans. But don't think that dogs are just given these jobs. Oh no, like humans, dogs study for a long time before they're allowed to take on serious work. Ah, that's all. There won't be a fire, not today. Hooray! Well done, Chusaka. You're a real service dog, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah, I'm working. I'm a real service dog. Oh, Chusaka, go away. I've had enough of you already today. Don't say that, because this working dog just saved your house from burning down. What do you mean? She smelled smoke coming from the outlet. It could be that Chusaka means well and wants to do the right thing, but nobody understands her. That's a bit hard to believe. Then what's this book? Oh, my math book. That's where I left it. Remember how Chusaka wanted to make you take it to school this morning? You're right. Atta girl, Chusaka. Well done. <coughs> what a rain. My feet got wet to the bone. But this morning, Chusaka tried to get you to wear a different pair of shoes. Hmm, that's something. I should listen more closely to this smart little dog of ours. Oh, finally, they understand me. Oh, oh. <laughs> hmm, it 
doesn't work. Try putting it in the other way. Did you read the instructions? Why would I? Instructions are for dummies. Yeah, instructions are for dummies. All right. Oh, what's going on? Whoa! My battery! <laughs> instructions teach us how to do things right. Instructions for a piece of furniture explain how to put it together. With the instructions for a television, we can adjust the picture and sound the way we like them. Printed on a box of oatmeal are the instructions for how to cook it. The instructions for medicines tell us what the medicine is for and how to safely use it. So always read the instructions if you want to do things right and avoid a lot of problems. I found it. Here it is. Here you go, Tom Thomas. Whoa. We got you a new chair, but it has to be assembled, and I'm afraid it'll be a little bit difficult for you. No, it won't. Don't worry, Dad. I'll do it. Finish before dinner, and we'll get ice cream tonight. A creamsicle. Two, okay? First, assemble the chair. Hmm. Tom Thomas, can I help you put the chair together? Come on. Hey, first you two need to read the instructions. Ah, Simka, stop being such a bore. What, like I haven't seen a chair? Or like I haven't seen a chair? Tom Thomas, you done? Dinner's ready. Let's go. Oh, Dad, no. I need another two minutes. Hmm. Simka, help me. How? What does it say I have to do in the instructions? Ah, I thought you could do it without him. Ah, all right, I'll help you. Let's see. Take this part over here and that one over there. No, look, get a screw. No, the longer one. It's over there. The very first stools and benches appear as far back as in ancient Egypt. The pharaoh's stool was special because it had a back. It is thought that the pharaoh's stool was actually the first chair. For a long time, a chair was considered a luxury. Rich noblemen would bring their own chairs to parties. And the more important the man, the higher the back of his chair. It wasn't until the 19th century that chairs became part of every house. Today, there are just so many different kinds of chairs. There are wooden chairs, plastic chairs, metal chairs, chairs with legs, chairs with wheels, folding chairs, baby chairs, just all sorts of chairs. Well, how could people sit down at the table <laughs> with no chairs? Ooh, I think we'll make it. Screw it in, quickly. No, look. We need one more screw. But there aren't any. There is. You gotta find it. I already looked everywhere. Tom Thomas, time's up. Nolik, you have to help. How? Just for a minute, that's all. Turn into a screw. If it's only a minute, I'll do it for you. I'm done. You built it. Huh. Great job, son. Mom, see how I won the bet. Can you believe it? He put the chair together. <gasps> You're so brilliant. Go on, have a seat. Oh! Huh? <gasps> uh. Ah, now I see. You missed a screw. But I screwed it in. It must have, uh, must have what? Must have what? Look, here it is. Ah. Ah. Now this screw's not going anywhere. And that ice cream you won? Well, you just lost it. Well then, Mr. Chair Builder, time for dinner? Yeah, in a sec. Where is that Nolik? He ran away. What a traitor. No, he's not. He promised you he'd become a screw for just a minute. And the minute was up. Well, where is he then? Over there. He's studying the instructions for the clock. Hey, Tom Thomas. It says that we put the wrong kind of battery into the clock. We should have used that kind. You see, Tom Thomas? If you don't want to be 
a dummy. Instructions are for you. Well done, Tom Thomas. Your mom's birthday's today and you're still sleeping. Hey, what's that? It's a drawing, a portrait of his mom. In my opinion, this mom doesn't look very much like Tom Thomas's mom. Maybe he didn't get to finish the picture yet. He was tired and passed out. This is not good. We gotta do something. Ah, we can help him. The pencil's right here. A pencil has lead inside. It's the lead that makes the drawing. Only lead doesn't grow on trees. It's made out of a mineral called graphite that's mined out of the Earth's crust. But how does the lead get inside a pencil? It's simple. Pencils are made with rods of lead and two wooden boards. Grooves are cut into the boards and the lead is placed in them. The halves are glued together and cut into pencils. The artist's tool is ready. This isn't going to work. Oh, give me a place to stand, and I shall move the pencil through the air. Try and get it closer to the drawing. You gotta lift it up a little. You gotta push it harder. No, like, we're blockheads. Look, there's a pencil sharpener. A piece of lead. That's all we need. All right, let's check out how it was done by the old scores. By the great masters, like us. Yeah, she could use a little more hair. And a hat, too. And a bow around her neck. Beautiful. And your sock has got to be in there. Yeah, let's keep drawing. Tom Thomas, are you still sleeping? Fixies? No need to thank us. Uh, where is my drawing? What have you done to it? If Mom sees this piece of art you created, she'll go and faint. I know it. From happiness, right? Fright's more like it. Does that look like my mom? Uh, well then, give it to your dad. If your dad won't faint, I know it. But it's my mom's birthday, not my dad's. You gotta be kidding me. There's also a famous painting like that. It's called the Black Square. It's a classic. You don't think she'll like it? People want to remember the highlights of their lives. And so they take photos of nature, of their families, of themselves, even of the food they eat. People have been doing this even before the invention of photography, by drawing. An artist might draw the sun, a river, some apple trees, and soon he's made a landscape. And if the apples aren't on trees but on a plate next to a vase, cup, or basket, then a still life is what it's called. If a person's in the center, then it's called a portrait. And when artists make pictures of themselves, it's called a self-portrait. Of course, it's easier for us to take a quick photo of things we pass along the way. But just like the old masters, we put a piece of our souls into our drawings. And if you draw more often, you'll see it for yourself. I promise you that. Maybe you could just give her one of your older drawings. Maybe you should just erase the mess you made of this one. That could work. Ugh. Erasing's gotta be easier than drawing. Ugh. Whatever. There's no way you can make it worse. Ugh. Hey, I think I know a way you can fix it. You can use the eraser for drawing. A portrait. Uh, portraits don't seem to work out too well for us. But a still life drawing is a piece of cake. Super! Uh-huh. Pretty good, right? Tom Thomas! Everything's on the table for breakfast. Mom, happy birthday. I drew this present for you. Thank you, Tom Thomas. What a lovely still life, so unusual. I tried really hard. We'll hang it up on the wall. 
Now, let's go eat. What would Tom Tom have done without us? Yeah. Whenever you get into a jam, your real friends will always show up to rescue you. This is our solar system, and it consists of... Friends, you're not going to believe it. I found... I discovered an unknown star. That is superb, Kali. Yeah. And today, journalists will visit the laboratory for an interview. Who's going to be interviewed? If you weren't late, you'd know that. I had to do my hair. They're here. Everyone hide. There are lots of galaxies in the universe with billions of hot glowing spheres that everybody knows as stars. Stars are each born out of huge clouds of gas and dust that are called nebulas. We see stars in the sky as tiny dots, but that's only because they are very, very far away. The closest star to our planet is the sun. Even though the sun isn't the hugest star, it still gives us the heat and light we need to live. <laughs> Professor Eugenius is a celebrity now, on a global scale. Yeah. Hey, did you see? Verda also got on the cover. No joke. Where? <gasps> And I think we look pretty good together. So, who wants my autograph? <laughs> we'll have to wait till after school. Uh, it's time to go. Hey, aren't you going? Not right now. My colleague and I have more important business. What colleague? The professor. Both of us have become celebrities. Verda, you got on that cover totally by accident. Uh, 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 somebody's jealous. <laughs> Well, we've got our new star. <laughs> now, what should I name it? A colleague? Huh? Why don't you name the new star Verda? After all, it does sound pretty. Verda, Verda, hmm. Like a vertex whirling around. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's a shame you didn't get my autograph. Because that new star now has my name, Verda. <laughs> And now an elaborate celebration needs to be thrown in my honor. I mean, mine and the professor's, of course. What celebration are you talking about? With a red carpet and flowers? Why are you just standing there? Make it happen! The poor girl thinks she's a star. Absolutely. So what can we do about it? With lunatics, it's better not to argue. That's what I read. Then let's play your silly game. Your Majesty. Your red carpet awaits. Then unroll it. And the flowers? Am I supposed to do everything myself? Of course not. Here, Your Highness, your crown. All right, now we're talking. I am a star. She's totally lost it. Mm-hmm. He's coming. Finally, finally, my dream is reality. Ah, oh, my little fixie friends, it's you here. I'm so honored you gathered here to congratulate me today. <laughs> us? Yes, us, them, we. We all should celebrate. No, I mean you and I. <laughs> now show us what you're carrying. Uh, of course, the certificate. It says this star discovered by Professor Eugenius has been registered with the name VE03732. We should start calling our big star from now on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's so funny? A clear night is perfect for searching in the sky for constellations. The easiest one to find is the Great Bear or the Big Dipper, which looks like a soup ladle. If you draw a line through the two outside stars of the Big Dipper, you'll find the bright North Star, which is part of a constellation called the Little Bear or the Little Dipper. A bit further is the W-shaped Cassiopeia. And these three stars that are next to each other are well known as the Belt of Orion. If you draw a line through them, you'll find a star named Sirius. It's part of the Greater Dog constellation, and it's the brightest star in the night sky. And on the other side of it, there is the star Aldebaran of the constellation Taurus. And these are but a few of the most visible stars. It's not even possible to imagine how many stars there really are in the universe. Tool 
Lola? I'm here. Fire. Here. VE73032? Is that someone new? Yeah, we've got a new student. She's a star. A new giant star. <laughs> 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 you 